How do you like that, JJ? That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Good. Good Thank morning, you. Man. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Sorry, we started a little late today, um, but we have a very special um, episode for you today. Uh, something that we do only on occasion, which is to reach all the way back to 30 years on technology. So, of course, the, the guest of honor today is, is Tim O'Neill. But the reason that we're doing this show is is um, is for the purpose of Interop, uh, Interop Las Vegas, which will start in May. Um, and so we'll, we'll be doing um, uh, a sequence of shows, uh, and, and this is just the beginning. Uh, so um, in addition to Tim, I would like to introduce uh, our other guest today, uh, Jennifer Joseph, uh, which go by JJ. And uh, hi, Jennifer. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. So uh, welcome to the show. Um, so you 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 haven't been with Interop for uh, thirty years, um, and I'm 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 convinced that you were not born thirty years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so so in any case, um, so um, I would like to hear from you. Um, what what is in store uh, for us uh, in the coming uh, Interop in May, and then maybe you could kind of work back into the the story of the day uh, that we're going to talk tell today. Sure. So. Um, this, this May is our actual 30th anniversary. The show started in 1986, um, although I was born uh, at that point. So for what we've been talking about for our 30th anniversary over really the last year is embracing the networking roots of Interop. I mean, our industry has gone through so many changes over the last, well, over the last 30 years, but also over the last few years. Um, and, the, and the importance of network infrastructure has become even more crucial. I mean, everything is connected, and that connection has to start somewhere. So the, the importance of the content in Interop being focused on networking has been, um, it's a resurgence for us. So we've got things like the Future of Networking Summit, a full networking track, um, and then everything, then we go up the stack, what sits on top of the network with security and applications and cloud. Um, on the celebration side, we've got receptions, we've got a look back at the history, I mean that's why we're doing this Google Hangout right now, um, but also a look towards the future. So. Very nice, very nice. So, so today, um, so I'm I'm DM and Tim is TM and you're JJ. So let me go ahead and introduce the the fourth guest of today, DC. I have no idea what D and C stands for, <laughs> but I don't. I'm not even sure you know. <laughs> I we have we. It's it's really good to have you on the show, DC. We Thanks, Danny. We miss you. Uh, it's been a while, so thanks for having me back again. Yeah, um, so we're, we're, before the show, we were talking about um, uh, doing a few more, uh, a few show down the road to to showcase your process. So tell us, tell absolutely. us about you. You are the CEO and the and the founder of Apostle Technology. So tell tell us quickly, um, and uh, what what is it that you do, and and um, and uh, um, and how's the business? Okay, well, I'll keep it real short. Um, we make. Um, network test tools to test how applications will work over uh, different uh, network conditions, different bandwidth delay and loss. Turns out that has a huge effect on um, whether applications work very well or not. So we make a set of test tools that are used by um, the sort of people who come to Interop and uh, as well as the sort of people who exhibited Interop. As you walk around you may see people doing demos using our product. Um, and so we have been since the very founding of the company 10 years ago um, on and off. It's not been every year, but we've been exhibitor at Interop. Um, and you uh, were last year. Interop. Yeah, we yeah, were I last remember, year. Remember we, 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 um, we were there, yeah. And my co-founder, uh, I actually met him at Interop wow. for the first time uh, in 1995 when we were doing, we were, uh, I was at a previous company and he was at the Univer uh, UNH Interoperability Lab uh, where we were doing, jointly doing, um, demonstrations of IPv6. So um, happy to talk about the, the history. Uh, I th believe I may be the only person who has ever written a novel that has scenes set at Interop. There were two scenes <laughs> in a novel I wrote uh, at Interop. It hasn't been published, so uh, <laughs> unfortunately you can't find it. But if anyone, if there's any publishers out there who want a great book about the technology world. Enough, enough. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. I mean, this is that's the whole point about Interop is that it's it's not it's not just a a a, um, a, a trade show, 
it's it's really where people once a year come together and and uh, and and really um, uh, work on their, their connections. So so with that, Tim, uh, I'll I'll give you the floor. Uh, so what was what was Interop like 30 years ago? I'm sure it was a name Interop. Well, the the very first one was Dan Lynch had a him and he he invented Surf, who we call the founder of TCP/IP uh, or connectionless technology. Um, they were working on trying to teach people what TCP IP was. So in, in Monterey, California, uh, they had the first, what we would call interop, but it was invitation only, uh, and it was for geeks. Uh, and we got one guy from Network General to go, uh, but then from, then 87 came, and 87 was the interconnectability, interoperability, the first step that way where we were, I actually remember people sitting on the floor or laying on the floor trying to figure out which connectors worked and uh, of course we were still arguing in those days whether it was going to be that mysterious Ethernet or was it going to be that beautiful token ring or was it going to be FDDI or was it going to be FM that's for freaking magic. Uh, so I, I guess Tim, I guess I missed that. Somehow I, I so interop, interop of course stands for interoperability and and it actually was was motivated by TCP/IP. Right. And yeah. I, I remember. Um, I mean, nowadays at Interop, everything is is Ethernet, but at the beginning it wasn't so, right? No, no. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. We had people that were building bridges, and oh, we we still had WAN analyzers. As a matter of fact, I had a the the first year I got to go, uh, we were just starting to introduce the uh, Network General Sniffer WAN analyzer, which was the first of its kind. Uh, and it was amazing what it could do. Uh, the first uh, one that we had with Network General, which was the you know the Sniffer company, uh, we had Ethernet analyzers, token ring analyzers, uh, and WAN analyzers, and that was the big thing. We were still trying to figure out, you know, were we still going to use token ring? And as a side note, the FBI and CIC still use token ring because it's very secure. You can't connect into it without having an upstream partner or a downstream partner know you're there. But we, that was, I can remember back in those days, you know, you'd, you'd sit on the floor and you'd, right in the middle of nowhere. I remember one guy, I forget the guy's name now, um, Bill, oh God, I think, but we, we were trying to figure out a problem and we got on the floor and it was just concrete and we were at Interop, okay, and we were on the floor with chalk trying to solve the problem. And, uh, and that's the way it was. It was a geek show. It was all the geeks. You know? Yeah, I remember I remember talking to Brian Chi and of course he, he hasn't been with Interop for thirty years neither, but but he's you know, he's been there a long time and he said that in the in the beginning people I mean Interop was really the the only event where all the vendors come together. Right. And, and we'd and sit discover down and discuss, why they wouldn't work. Yeah, together. and we discussed stuff, uh, we were it was a it was a huge geek fest. I mean I, I can't put yeah. it in any other way. And it was wonderful, and I remember in '92, and I was trying to remember the guy's name. I can't remember it. Save my life. Uh, I remember asking how much WAN we had for the whole show, Denny. Okay, we had the equivalent of three T1s. Okay, so we had about four megabytes of access, and um, man, think about that today. You know, they may have had a couple of thousand units, but think about it today: hundreds of thousands of connections. Uh, and of course, like you said, it's all Ethernet or fiber. Uh, you know, people still use fiber and wired Ethernet now. Uh, we still have, you know, different technologies coming along. Uh, I can remember the ATM days, and that doesn't, that's not your bank ATM. That's asynchronous transfer mode. Um, some of my favorite years was the year that I think it was Cabletron and Cisco had a boxing match, um, and um, Cisco lost. And whoever it was, I don't remember who it was actually the second guy, but he won, and whoever it was, they weren't Cisco's uh, uh, partner after that. I don't know why, okay? Um, and uh, I remember Mr. T coming. I, would, I think I told uh, Jennifer the other day that I was walking out to go get something, and I hear this, you fool! And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Who's calling someone a fool? Because, I mean, this is a tech show. We don't fight at tech shows, right? And uh, there was Mr. T going up and down the aisle. It was pretty amazing to, to get to see him. I've seen people there from, you know, Bill Gates, 
course, my friend uh, Vince Cerf, one of the more, most wonderful representatives of our technology worldwide, um, uh, even though he's with Google now. Just kidding, Vince. Um, I was trying to... Um, we had a maze game one year. Do you do you remember when Jennifer? You see, you see how how far how far do you go back? Ninety five. Hmm. That was my first one uh, in Atlanta. Do you remember, actually, do you remember where that was? That was Atlanta because yeah. Atlanta was the only convention center on the East Coast that was large enough to host Interop oh, at yes. that time. Mm -hmm. So on the East was, Coast. On the East Coast, it, so it was, was it, Vegas was it, Convention it was still Center. Called, wasn't it called Network World then? Uh, it was N plus I, Net N plus World, I, plus, World Interop. plus Interop. Okay. Yeah, Network okay. World Interop. Yeah, of course, we remember the horrible one in 2001. Uh, but it was amazing. I mean, uh, well, I remember 2001, the... 2001, it actually, actually was 9-11. Correct, yeah. Were you, were you there too, DC? Um, Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, I, in Atlanta, yeah. My memory is a bit hazy on that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget it. It was amazing. the 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 World Congress Center is pretty big. It's not as big as the the old um, Las Vegas Center Convention Center was, but um, literally when they announced it, the whole convention center and I'm not joking when I say you you could hear people crying, you but you couldn't hear the typical roar of the of the technology, because when you go to Interop, Network World and Interop, you would walk in that door and you would instantly hear this roar of conversation, and it was uh, exciting because you were going to meet people that you only talked to. You were going to get to, you know, talk about technology that you didn't know about or you knew about, and you wanted to learn more. And that was where you went to get your literature. I mean, back in the old days at Network World and Interop, and that when you'd come home, you'd have a whole suitcase full of literature. Because you couldn't, we didn't really have the internet in those early days, you know, and uh, it was amazing. And you got to meet, and, and literally you could walk up to Vince, you could walk up to Dan, you could walk up to, you know, Gates, you could walk up to these people and just talk to them. Uh, and it was it was really personal. But then I remember the early 90s going, uh, and it was at the, the Las Vegas Convention Center. Oh, my gosh, I remember that one year they had both convention centers open. It was monstrous. You could have had a motorcycle and couldn't have gotten around to see everybody. Uh, so you'd, you'd get your first thing they gave you was a badge, of course, and they gave you a little map of the center. And you'd uh, say, I got to go here. I got to go here. And unfortunately, when you did that, you found out that one was way over here and one was way over there, and you had to walk it. You lost weight during Interop. It was one of the first Weight Watchers programs ever. Uh, um, <laughs> Oh, it was it was just amazing. I think the uh, Interop New York one, one of the first ones, and I forget which year it was. Uh, I'm I'm from the South, so we're not, in, and we've been doing it in Las Vegas and Atlanta. And I I remember I went to my booth, and there was a box. I wanted to open it, and a guy came over, and, and he was with some he was some level of a uh, the union, and he told me I couldn't open that box. And I said, Wait a minute, that's my box. I can open it, do what I want with it. No, you can't. You have to let us do everything. <laughs> and I, I remember saying, well, go find a supervisor. This guy showed up, and he if, if I put Denny uh, on top of DC's shoulders, wouldn't even touch the guy's head. <laughs> and he, I told him at that point, I said, you can do it anytime you want. You know, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. But that's when, the first time I ever did that. Um, hey, I wanna, I wanna, Tim, I want to go back to, to, to uh, 2001 Atlanta. And 9/11 was a Tuesday, and I, I remember the story about how uh, a bunch of people left left the show right away because um, plane were flying weren't flying. I remember they weren't flying until Friday, and a bunch they, of people uh, had to rent a car and drove and drove from Atlanta to Maryland because they had to they had to go and help all people help 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 all the Pentagon to. Um, there, there was a the, lot the of companies just yeah. yeah a lot of companies you couldn't get a school bus in Atlanta at that point. Yeah, and they were renting buses. Uh, I remember Microsoft had them lined up, getting people and taking them. Same thing with cars. Uh, you would have eight people, seven people wanting to get, you know, ride together. Um, that, but that's after the shock of it. That's when people started, uh, and it was barren. I was actually there. Um, had to help take down some stuff the next day, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. usually. But that's you know, a, we we we. I mean that the the technologists, and that's that's you know. 
people who come to Love My Two or people who go to Interop or Shockfest, you know, th th this is a very small, a very very uh, small minority of the, the the population. But at the same time, we are the kind of custodians of the of the data infrastructure, right? So when you see 9/11, you see the plane, the smoke, the building, but what you don't see are the data centers that has been uh, destroyed. And the people who had to go fix that are are you know. They don't wear hard hats. They <laughs> they they they're actually at Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah. It but from the original days when Dan started it, um, and by the way, he was he was working with Vint and Rob Kahn and some of the other DARPANET experts of that era, and so Dan was is and still to this day is a huge representative of our. TCP history. He is, he, he and Vint and Rob and there's a whole bunch of them I like to get together. Tim's Burner Lee and just because they were there back in those days. And I think that was the amazing thing to me at Interop. There was no class differentiation. When you walked into a booth, you could talk to the CEO. You could talk to you know people like Dan Vint. You know uh, anybody. You could walk right up to them and talk to them. And I think that's what helped our technology develop. You know, Internet interop to me is the glue uh, for our industry. It um, it it brings us together in a equal format where we can uh, argue, discuss, pontificate, whatever the adjective you want to use. But it was amazing, and it still is. Uh, my last interop was 2004. Uh, and I'd love to go back someday. Uh, we'll, I will go back one day, hopefully. But um, I don't think I'll be in Atlanta. I don't think they're coming to Atlanta anytime soon. Uh, yeah, JJ. By the way, JJ, I, I was reading somewhere and I saw your name. Are you? You're the person that's responsible for Interop, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my day job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get one of those little hoverboards. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Oh, no, I, I mean, it doesn't light on fire. Yeah, well, I mean, I was going to catch it on fire. <laughs> but yeah, that's what you need, one of those to get around and around. I, I, it's amazing. Uh, and, of course, every year we have Hot Stage now. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the original interoperability fun part. We'd get together yeah, we, and we start plan, we actually plugging plan things. To a, we actually, Tim, right? We actually plan to do an RMTV on Hot Stage. Yeah. yeah. So, um, hey, DC, um, so, so you you didn't you, you you didn't start this company uh, that that far back, right? So no, when that you was 10 when years you ago. so before that there yeah. was another I was at another company called uh, Mentat, and we were uh, an OEM developer of TCP/IP stacks. Mm. So oh. they were involved in um, in interop from the beginning, as as Tim said, when it was really an interoperability test for all of the vendors to get together and make sure their TCP IP stacks were working together. Mm -hmm. That was before my time, mm -hmm. um, but that's how we got involved with IPv6 um, uh, demonstrations at, at Interop where we were the developer of the stack and we had stacks for Apple and for uh, HP and for uh, a couple of the other um, OEMs at that, at that point and you know we were behind the scenes the guy who, guys who are writing the stack. Yeah. Now, Interop, of course, has a has a huge uh, educational component to it, uh, and then and then in addition, um, there is also the Interop Net and the Interop Lab, right? Right. Were, were, so back then, were, were you involved with that as well? Um, it's kind of evolved over time. So and and you know the the company's involvement uh, predated me joining the company. So you know. It, it, at the very beginning, it was much more of a uh, engineers getting together to test out TCP/IP stacks. Then it kind of evolved into an expo that went along with that, and then it evolved into it being a lot more of an expo and a lot less of a uh, um, actual testing. Although there's, you know, still with the uh, the network, uh, there's still some of that going on. I think that's very important. Um, but it's it's become more educational. It's become more for end users and less for vendors to get together and actual do real um, testing with each other. And that's kind of natural as the, as the products have, have evolved and the industry has evolved. I think I think the, the, the technology part hasn't shrink, it's just the other part has grown. So in comparison it seems like it, it, it's gotten smaller, but in reality the, the amount of engineering activity, technology 
is still there, right? Well, it's a, it's a different group. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's still a lot of interoperability testing that needs to be done as different standards are um, are evolved through the uh, through the IETF. But that's not interop really isn't the place for that now. There's individual groups that get together and do their interoperability testing, where interop then becomes, and, and JJ can probably talk about this better than I can, um, the place where you demonstrate all of these things coming together and actually working, as opposed to a place where engineers can sit there and draw pictures on the, you know, in chalk on the floor and solve um, underlying code problems. It now becomes more, I think, system related. How do we get these systems of commercial products from uh, existing vendors to all come together in a you know, in a real-world environment. Yeah, it, it's much more of a user perspective now. Yeah. What does yeah. it all mean? How does it really, you know, change your, your life as a user, right, to yep. the technology and not necessarily yep. from the vendor? Right. It'll, it'll change your life. I remember one year we got, you know, I was App Dancer. Uh, that was actually a product, not Lab Dancer, App Dancer. And uh, we actually won, we became one of the finalists um, for Best of Show. And the minute we got back, the phone was ringing off the wall. So it was... Uh, it was pretty, you know, when you when you got any kind of recognition at Interop, uh, it played very heavily uh, for you in the real world. Um, uh, yes, I, I you can't see it on this camera. I've got my best of uh, Interop uh, finalist poster on uh, on another wall. <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I had mine. I couldn't. I spent I three days. That. Pictures. What was that from last year or a year before? Oh, oh from mine was eight years ago. So oh, okay, uh -huh. uh, goes back. Back a ways, but I still display it proudly. Near the Morse code days, right? <laughs> yes. Now, now, Jennifer, didn't you yes, guys I'm... used to have a interop TV for a while where we had a... I remember one year they had a bunch of tube monitors up and they were taking, you know, scanning the show and they were had people out doing the re, uh, interviews with different people and... Uh, yeah, we still do. We still do a little bit of that. It's not necessarily live TV, but we capture a lot of footage at the event. Um, I, I'm sure you guys know Padre, who yes. is involved in the Interop Net. So he does his thing too mm -hmm. with Twit TV or Twit TV. Um, mm -hmm. So he's usually on site doing some of that, and mm -hmm. then we have other groups that do live podcasts. So there's always some sort of activity happening. Um, but I. But I want to agree on the point. It is much more for the end user nowadays. So the the people that are coming to be educated in the classes and then go see the interop net and walk around the floor, those are IT managers and directors. One of our good friends uh, on that is a teacher there, Mike Pinocchi, longtime friend. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I remember back when Bill Alderson was there and some of the other goody oldies that are no longer there. But Mike has been a friend for a long, long time, and he's a very good. And that's one of the things I think was that today is great about Interop is the quality of instructors is amazing. Not that Dan Lynch and the team, the DARPA team, and that back in the old days was, uh, but you know today they were taking the technology and were showing the application of it. Back when we were developing the technology, we were trying to as DC trying to figure out why this wouldn't work and why that wouldn't work, and and it was truly interoperability. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it's growing immensely. In, in, um, but like I said earlier, I really do believe that Interop is kind of the industrial glue because even though it is more of a user, you still have people go to meet other people, to meet other vendors, to meet other, you know, to seek products and that. So it's it's a it's a great place to go and find out about your competitors, but it's also a great place to go if you're looking for a product. You're going to have 15 vendors that have it, and they'll all show you why theirs is the best. And that's one of the things that makes Interop a truly historical part of our growth in our network, uh, in our in our industry. And I'm I'm old. I'm not. I'm I'm about as old as Vint is. So we go back to the X25 days, which packet switching is what started IP, and uh, and Vint's mine. So uh, yeah, that's a uh, yeah, Interop is the place to go, and you get to meet people like Danny and hey, DC, DC I wanna, and yeah, all these DC, cool people. I wonder if I can ask DC a question because you were there as a vendor last year, right? And and of course, yes. um, you know, you you see companies of different size, right? You see the Cisco mm -hmm. of the world that basically 
you know, they, they occupied um, uh, a football field of, of, uh, of a size booth. And then you have the kind of the startup city. And you were kind of in the middle, right? You had a 10 by 10. Yeah, so we're one of those small companies that isn't in startup city because we're not a startup anymore, but we're still a very specialized uh, product. And uh, I, I think Interop is a, is a great forum for companies like this. Everyone knows Cisco and you know, uh, Cisco even has their own trade show at this point, so yeah, and it, you're probably it, not going yeah. to see the so latest they, you know, Cisco they, you thing. Don't, yeah, so they, they, but for companies like us, where yeah. here's so a chance to see, you know, 20, 30, 40 companies you may not have, never have heard of with products you may not have even known existed. Um, yeah. and this is a way of really kind of getting a feel for the whole industry and what sort of tools may be out there that uh, that could make your life better. As yeah, because you, you were you were there actually. Um, you were very unique because you you were actually uh, showing a a um, an early product. You actually had the beta unit. Yes, and yes, you were, you that's were right. To talk to people, try to get some uh, feedback. How did that work out? Uh, it was good, um, in, in the sense that this was a chance for us as a vendor to get in front of you know fifty, a hundred potential customers. Um, and see what they thought about this uh, new product idea. Um, mm -hmm. We showed demos of a, of a prototype of it. We got a lot of good feedback and realized we needed to kind of redo the product. So um, this was our one-day focus, you know, three-day focus group. Uh, at the same time, we had our, our traditional products there, so mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. we had some sales activity at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit frustrating because, you know, people, we, we found people who said they were interested in the product, and uh, but not quite the way it uh, it existed, so we've been kind of went back to the drawing board after that to redo it. So that I was hoping that this year we would have it ready, we could come back with the with the product ready to show. But uh, we're not really we're not there yet. So hopefully next year. Yeah, Interop will still be there. Yeah. Yes. And I had, I had um, one thing I was going to. One of the things I remember is uh, the the first year we had, uh, and I forget the guy's name now, but he brought a toaster and had it operational over TCP IP. Uh, it was a Sunbeam toaster, and I forget the guy's name, but uh, uh, Ron challenged him to come with his TCP IP toaster. Uh, and then the last one I remember really good. No, no, no. So what, what is this supposed to do? What is this toaster supposed to do? I it's think our a typical internet is toaster. Ready? Everyone no, always you, talks about the internet toaster. He actually built one. He actually did. Yeah, and, so, and so, 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 you so, still had to put so the bread in. So, so, so tell me, yeah. explain to me, what, is it, what does it do? Is it all a regular toaster? All our, yeah, it was a Sunbeam toaster, and I remember that you, whatever you did, you had to put the bread or whatever you weren't in, and you pushed it down, and then, if I remember, he made, he centered a single that made it pop out, and that was all I remember doing. You um, know, I, I need to I need to edit this part out because I bet that's an idea that I can take to a VC and get at least five million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. And then the the the, the uh, oh gosh, it was the second one I really wanted to. Oh, the barbed wire. I remember. Someone, I was just about to say that. That was the yeah. best demo I ever saw. Wasn't that the a, best a, demo in the world? Someone took barbed wire. Yes, and, and it had two networking poles. running over barbed wire, barbed showing wire. it would work. Yep. That was that was one. Do you remember who that was? Because I no, don't. I don't. But and, I and what and what was the data rate? It was I, pretty low. But the point more, was more it was code rate. Yeah. The well. And it was really funny because uh, a few years before that, I actually used barbed wire to get a ground for a satellite station because we couldn't get ground because we were too far up the hill and there was no moisture. So we there was some barbed wire running outside of the uh, the knock the knock there. So we put a ground on that, went down the bottom of the hill and took a spike and hammered the barbed wire in the ground and now we had a ground. And uh, so that was one of the big jokes, you know. Uh, but uh, th those two, I, the, so, the toaster so, was the one. I, think I, wanna, I want to hear that story again. So the barbed wire, that was just a joke. It wasn't really like, uh, nobody put down in the booth or anything, right? Yeah. No, it was, in, it was in the booth. They were yeah, showing, um, app, well, they were showing using barbed wire uh, instead of Ethernet just to show that you could you could do it. That I, I think they were showing either TCP IP stack or something else that was a bit more resilient than, than the... Uh, the more traditional versions. Yeah, so it went over anything, even barbed wire. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, that, it two, that is a totally poles and then barbed that is wire. Totally untapped market, especially in North Korea. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but that was. Those are some. I can't remember all of them. I was trying to find some pictures, and I apologize, I couldn't find them. But uh, 
if I now I'll find them. Now that we're through with this, I'll find them next week. Um, but those are some of the things that you saw that, you know, re really they were part of it. They they were like, oh man, if you can do that, we can do anything with it. You know, the barbed wire one was especially good because back in the earlier days, Arcnet and a sort of you know, you know, you tune everything. Before, before we start the show, um, Tim was saying that he, he, you know, he was so disappointed that he, he had he had all these things that that he was going to bring to the sh to bring to today's show, and he did you know he spent the whole night searching. He couldn't find he couldn't <laughs> find it, and I didn't realize it until he started telling me how he couldn't move boxes that he wasn't using Google to search. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually opening boxes. <laughs> I'm old. I do things in the box, but uh, oh man! I mean, there was, and and I I love the fact that Interop really still is. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I used to have a T-shirt from one of the Interop shows. I helped in the knock, and I was doing the WAN stuff. And I tried to find that I was going to wear it for you, but, but probably it wouldn't fit me anymore. I've gotten too chunky anyway, but. Uh, you know, um, yeah. I, I one of the year that I was there uh, for my for my last company, um, we decided to pass out T-shirt, and and you know this is lesson learned. I I didn't realize that that the people who attend Interop are not really the general population, so all the extra large and double X and triple X were all gone. You know, like by the first twenty minutes, and all I was left with the medium and the small. Nobody want that. <laughs> I should have come by your booth because everyone only gives out extra large. And that's well, because they is. learn, you know. Those yes, I know. To tend to be a little bigger, <laughs> like them. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, there's one more thing that I had on my notes was, uh, DC, were you there when? And I don't remember. Uh, Joe, was it Joe Piscopo? Arm wrestled some CEO, and the CEO kicked his butt, and it really upset him. Um, Oh, we've had some cool things, but there was an arm wrestling event, and I'll try to remember find a, but um, um, it was a star, and I think it was Joe something. I'll say Piscopo, but that's not right. And uh, they had an arm wrestle, and he he came out all buffed up, and this geek CEO whipped his behind right there in front of everybody. He was like, didn't know that geeks could be so strong. <laughs> oh, we had. Now, uh, now, DC, you've been to Tokyo. I've been That's to right. Paris. Uh, they threw me out of Paris because I tried to speak French. Um, I understand. Tokyo. Yeah. All uh, in France. Okay. <laughs> that was actually my reps took me out because I was embarrassed and I was trying to speak French. Um, but uh, did what did you see? Uh, Japan being a total different culture, a much more. Well, actually, culture. I, I lived in Japan for five years, so um, I know the culture well, and they kicked me out because I actually speak the language. Um, <laughs> but Tokyo Interop is a very different experience from um, from uh, Las Vegas. It's actually bigger, much bigger. Uh, I think it has on the order of about 100,000 attendees. So oh. it in the same size space, so it's really crowded. Um, and, and people there take it really seriously. They're, they're like TCP, ISP ninjas. Well, yeah, the Japanese take everything very seriously that, um, you know, if you're supposed to learn something, you learn it in, in a lot of detail. Uh, but the show tends to, because the show is, it, it's in the same size space with so many people, it, it uh, has a very different feel about it. Um, there are, I, and this was already a couple of years ago, so it might have changed, but every booth had, um, had you know, a row of, of uh Booth ladies, we'll call them. Um, it was um, the the location is actually right in Tokyo's, and and Japan's a very centralized country, so you, you people would go there very easily from their jobs. They would they would go for a few hours and come back. Where in in Vegas, you kind of have to go for the day or for the week, so you get a smaller, more focused group. Where in Tokyo, you get a larger group of just people going there to see what's there for uh, for for a few hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hey, love Tim, Paris. We should, we Paris should was probably, nice. Yeah, yeah we, should. Tim, we should probably close the show. I, I wanna I, I keep looking at uh, Jennifer. She was like, you know, a bunch of boys get together and you know, who knows <laughs> when they go across the line. So <laughs> so we I think I think we've done pretty well and you know we it's, we kept it a PG thirteen, did we not, Jennifer? Yeah, no, you, you. It's really interesting. It's great to hear the old stories. <laughs> we have well, several. We, we can go on. We can go on for days. Um, so why don't we close the show, Jennifer? Tell us um, um, uh, what what our audience should know about Interop and and how they should um, 
what should they get? Uh, what should they expect this year in May in in Vegas? Well, they should expect. I mean, I think uh, again back on the end user point, the majority of the attendees are IT managers, directors, network admins, architects. Um, so that's what the conference content is all about. Um, it's not just a network, but it's everything that sits on top of it. So it's that's the interoperability of Interop right now. It's the networking or the infrastructure integrating with security and apps. Um, we've got classes on DevOps, that kind of thing. So that's the core, and I think it's still got that um, real community feel. What you guys were talking about earlier, where you go and you run into people that you've known for many years, and you find out who's where, working where, and what projects they're they're focused on, and then you meet some new people at the same time. Yeah, one one of the things that Tim and I talk about all the time is is that you know for in in our experience as as sort of technical sales, is is one of the things that we should recognize is that when we're in front of the customer, we need to convince them that they are not alone. You know mm -hmm. the problem that they have, they are not alone. We've seen it. We know how to solve it. And and that that's one thing that no matter how much change evolution interop has has gone through in the last thirty years, is that 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 is the one thing is that when you go to interop, you 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 quickly come to recognition that you're not alone. There are people yeah, out there. Yeah, peers. Yeah. They're peers. They're they're solving the same problems. Mm -hmm. They've seen it before. Um, and there are different ways of solving the problem. That's that's why you go there. Hey, DC, um, what? Give us a summary, and and then we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll let uh, Tim close the show then. Uh, summary of whatever you want to say is your time. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, Interop has evolved over uh, over thirty years, and uh, I think the changes have have been great. Um, we're not exhibiting this year because uh, we don't have the product ready yet. Hopefully next year, but I will be there as an attendee. Um, I see there's a lot of changes, a lot of changes to the format, um, and, and I think those uh, those sound really good. And looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, and and what is your what is your website in case they want to know more about your product? Apposite-tech.com. A P P O S I T E. Dash T E C H. Dash T E C H dot com. Is, so just look up Apposite Technologies WAN emulators. Yeah, and and don't look up DC Porter because otherwise you find all the novels that he <laughs> has. Not That's right, <laughs> including ones about interrupt. Hey, you need to get Jennifer a copy of that. Yeah, you? I totally need a copy of. All right, <laughs> hanging around somewhere. Okay, hey Tim. Well, first off, thanks for this. Thanks for interrupt, Dan. Um, I did look this up. The guy was John Romke. And Simon Hackett controlled uh, a household appliance. A so in 1989 at, at the Interop, he was challenged by the founder, and he could come back if he would be able to toast it or show that turn the toaster on. Uh, and then the hand wrestling or arm wrestling thing was I was wrong. Joe Piscopo, the actor, uh, and he wrestled Bob Levine. That's about looks like about half his size. And Levine and, and Levine was with Cabletron, okay, and uh, he won, which was cool because Piscopo was well known for being, you know, he was a big guy, he was a muscular guy. So, and I did find also that it was Cabletron, Cabletron against Cisco in 1996, and uh, Cisco lost. So, so, so the lesson here, uh, uh, boys and girls, is that whatever you do, don't do it in front of people who has internet access, <laughs> because it will never go away. It's a lie. What goes on in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. That's right. That's a With lie. That, I'm going to close the show. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't know what is next, but we definitely will come back and do a bunch for Interop, including visiting the hot stage. Uh, talking to uh, a couple of vendors, including one that is our sponsor, NetBiz, who has been selected as one of the two supplier, and possibly talk to Brian Chi and show off a bunch of stuff. So with that, uh, thank you very much, and see you next. See you soon. Bye, Bye everybody. Bless Bye. Day. Bye. 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 You can hang on.